Welcome to the shortest Webflow course on YouTube. In just a few minutes, you're gonna know how Webflow works, how to navigate the interface, and how to start building your website using the same strategies and frameworks used by real world Webflow experts. Now really quick, this video is so short, we can't possibly cover everything. So I'm gonna link below to a free resource called Webflow Mistakes 101. It covers the top five mistakes that we've noticed Webflow beginners tend to make when first starting out in Webflow. And we also included step-by-step -step instructions on how you can avoid those mistakes. But without any further ado, let's dive right into Webflow. Okay, so once you create a new project in Webflow, you will find yourself in what is called the Webflow Designer. There's also another view called the Webflow Editor. We're not gonna dive too much into that in this tutorial because you are gonna spend the most of your time in the designer because this is where you actually build your website. The editor is actually really easy to use. It's kind of where you go if you want to just easily add blog posts or edit copy or replace images without having to actually come here into the more complex designer. So over here on the left hand side, we have the add panel. This includes all the different elements that you can use to build your website. We then have the pages. This will include all of the pages in your project. We then have the navigator. This will show all the elements on the canvas. So if I go to the add panel and were to drop in a section, if we go to the navigator, you can see that we have a section. If we were to add elements within this section, you would see them start stacking underneath this section. From here we have components. So components are reusable sections or elements on your website that you wanna reuse over and over. And also if you want to make a change to one, you want it to apply to all of those. So common components are like nav bars, footers, things like that. Then we have the variables tab. Here's where we can create global styles. So think like colors, typography, things like that. So that if we wanted to change those down the road, we can come down here, change the single variable. For example, if we were to change a color, it would change the color across the entire website. But we can also do that through things like classes and HTML tags, which we'll dive in a little bit. From here, we have our style selectors. This will just show you all the different classes being used on your website. We then have our asset panel. This is where you can have images, documents, videos, things like that. Then we have CMS collections. This is where you can have things like blogs and items like that. We're not gonna dive too much into that because that is a whole video of itself that we're actually gonna be dropping pretty soon. Then we have Webflow logic, kind of like a Zapier, but inside of Webflow. And then we have users where you can turn your website into a membership site. Then we have e-commerce where you can actually turn your website into an e-commerce store. And then we have apps. So think of things like WordPress plugins. Here's where you can find apps that will extend the functionality of OneFlow. So what we're gonna do is we're now gonna learn how to build a basic section. So there is this really simple formula that you want to follow every time you build a new section on your website. It will help keep your project really clean and really organized and you'll know a little bit more what's going on. So we already have our section. So for every new section, we want to go to the add panel and drop in a section. This is where we can add things like our padding, like our vertical padding between the sections. Uh, we can even add left and right padding to add a margin on the right, on the left and right side so that our elements don't go up against the sides of the page. Now, really quick, before we move on, we are currently adding padding to the section element. This is actually one of the mistakes in that free resource Webflow Mistakes 101 that I told you about. One of the mistakes in there is that people just tend to add padding in the wrong places in Webflow. For example, say they want a little bit more padding between a section, they might just pick a random text element or just some random element and start adding padding below or top or to the sides of it. That's actually one of the biggest mistakes we've seen people make because it can make your project really unorganized if you're just randomly adding padding to different elements. So that's just one of those mistakes that I was talking about. If you want the rest of them, there's a few others that are really common among new Webflow users. That link to that resource is in the description below, but let's hop right back into the tutorial. So within each section, we want to add then what is called a container. So if we go to the add panel, we have this container element. We're gonna drag that in right there. Now you can see in the navigator, we have a section and a container. 
Now within this container, here's where we can start adding our elements. So if you want to add text, buttons, things like that, we'll add this within the container. Now let's give these two, before we go any farther, let's give these two elements some classes. So a class is a way you can um, apply styles, the same styles to more than one element. So for example, with this section, if we go to the style selector, I'm just gonna name this section. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some vertical padding to this element. And then we're gonna add a slight gray background color. Now let's go to the add panel and drop in another section below this one. You can see this section is completely unstyled. It has no padding, it has no background. But if we were to go to the style selector and add a class called section, actually you can see it's being recommended to us right here. If we were to click on this, it's going to automatically apply the styles that we applied to this section because they're being, create, they're being connected with the same class. So that's kind of how classes work. There are also things called combo classes. So for example, say this section, we wanted to use it because we wanted the vertical padding, but say we wanted a different background color. Say we wanted a black background. All we have to do is go to the style selector, add any class, any class name you want. So I'm just going to say black. From here, we can change the background color to black. And you can see it did not change the section above it. So let's add one more section really quickly we can do the same thing so we can give this a, a class of a section it will automatically apply the styles of the first section and you can see if we click into the style selector now it's going to show us existing combo classes now say we wanted this background to be something different like yellow we'll just add a combo class yellow instead we'll change it to a nice yellow color or orange, depending on how you interpret this color. And that is how we can use combo classes. So let's go up to this section right here. We are going to give this container a class. So we're just gonna say container, and we are gonna make the max width a little bit larger. Now within here, we can either start dropping in elements like text or buttons or things like that. Or what we can do is we can drop in a div. So a div block is kind of just think, think like a wrapper or a box that you can put other elements in. And I would suggest that because we are going to be applying some styles on the wrapper to kind of create um, a layout for our text. So if you want our text to be side by side, be like a button or something versus vertical, we're gonna have to set custom styles for that. And we might not want to add those styles to our container because our container controls the max width of each section. So I hope that made sense. But what we're going to do is we're going to drop in a div. We are just going to call this header wrapper. Now within this, we are going to drop in a heading. And then we are going to drop in a paragraph. And then let's drop in a button. Perfect. Now you can see both of these, all three of these elements are within this header wrapper. Now the reason we did this is if we go over to our style panel under layout, we can actually make this um, a little bit different in terms of layout by using what is called Flexbox. So if we were to click on this icon right here, this would make all the elements horizontal. Now, what if we want a nice vertical look like a lot of headers on a website? Well, we can just click on direction vertical. That will align everything vertically, but we want to align things to the center. So what we'll do is align to the center and perfect. There we have a section that is vertically aligned, but what's good about putting all these elements within a wrapper is what we can do is we can use this gap feature where we can drag this and it will increase the gap between all of our elements. So this is really cool. Another reason we want to use a wrapper, you get to use what is called inheritance. Now this is something that has to do with CSS. It is not Webflow specific, but basically what this means is, say we wanted to align this text to the center. 
Well, we can actually do this by not applying this align center style to this actual paragraph. What we can do is we can pick the parent element, which is this div called header wrapper. We can then set the align on the div on the parent, and this will align the text inside of it as long as you didn't add a custom style to those. Now, the reason we wanted to do this on the wrapper and not on individual elements is let's take a snippet from this paragraph and let's apply this to our heading. So you can see our heading is also not center line, but if we use the wrapper, what we can do is we can click on align center and it will align both the heading and the paragraph center without having to manually do that for each one. Now, I showed you Flexbox. Flexbox is really powerful, but there may be times when you want to use grid. So right here, you can see we have the grid option. So if we click on that, you can see we've now placed all of our elements within a grid. Now, this isn't the best layout to show you because we don't have the right elements in here. This kind of looks kind of ugly, but the you kind of get what's going on here. From here, we can still do things like set the gap. So we can increase the gap between the cells of the grid. Okay, so now I reverted back to vertical flex and now I want to go over breakpoints. So you can see up here near the top, we have these little icons. This basically shows the different screen sizes that we can design for. Now, this is based off of CSS. So how CSS works is changes made um, to the base breakpoint will cascade down and they'll cascade up, which means they'll apply to smaller screen sizes and larger screen sizes. But if we were to go to the tablet right here and make a style change, it would only apply to mobile landscape and mobile portrait. It would not apply to larger screen sizes. The same thing if we go to mobile landscape, it would apply to all screen sizes smaller, but it would not apply to any screen sizes larger. So let's just demonstrate that real quick. So if we were to increase the gap of this section right here, and then go to smaller screen sizes, you would see it carried over perfectly. If we were to go back to desktop, you're gonna see it's the old style. So that's something to keep in mind when you're optimizing your designs for mobile. They will apply on smaller screen sizes, but they won't apply on larger screen sizes. The only caveat there is if we click on these three dots, we can add larger breakpoints that are larger than our base one. So I'll add a 1920 breakpoint. Here, any design changes we make to this base breakpoint will apply to the larger breakpoint. But if we make a design change to the larger breakpoint, it will not apply to the smaller breakpoints. So it kind of goes in both ways. Okay, so before we end this video, I quickly wanna show you how you can supercharge how you build your website by using what is called UI kits. So if you go to our ad panel, you can see we've been working under the elements tab. We actually have this other tab called layouts. If we were to click on this, it will show you different libraries that you can use to drop in pre-built elements. So by default, Webflow is gonna give you the starter library, but if we were to click on to browse more libraries, we're gonna be able to browse a lot more that are made by other people. And a lot of them are actually free. So you can come down here and pick whichever one you want. The one I really like to use is what is called the Untitled UI Library. They have one of some of the most um, exhaustive, or they have the most exhaustive uh, library so far, I believe, uh, because I believe they have the most elements, at least last time I checked. So what you're gonna do is click on that. Then you're gonna wanna click on this Install Library button. This is going to ask which workspace you want to add it to. We're gonna add it to the Fitter Media workspace. And then we're gonna add it to this project right here. This is the one we are working in right now. So we're gonna click on install. Then we can go back to our website or our project and then we can refresh. After we refresh, the library should be added to our, our ad panel. So if we go to layouts, there we go, perfect. So we added our untitled UI library. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just delete these sections that we created and I'm gonna show you how simple it is to build a landing page using these, un, uh, these libraries. So we're gonna to go to layouts, we're gonna open untitled UI, and we're first gonna drag in a nav bar so you can kind of see a little preview of what they look like. I'm going to choose this one up here, so we're gonna drag that in. 
and then we are going to want some sort of header section so let's find a good one for that i'll pick this one right here and then we will want some sort of feature section underneath that so let's go type in feature so we're getting some feature sections right here um i'm kind of looking like for a grid style so we, here we go here's perfect so you can see we can actually drag this straight into the navigator so we can control on which sections or under which sections it applies so we're going to drag it to the bottom here then let's drag in another feature section so we'll get one that is slightly different this time uh, we'll use this one kind of has a video with it so we'll add that to the bottom and then let's add um, some social proof so we'll do some testimonials this looks good so we'll drag that to the bottom and then let's add a call to action so let's just type in CTA and we'll pick a pretty good CTA that we can add to the bottom this one looks good and then finally let's add our footer so we're gonna go and search for a footer and we'll pick a footer boom now if we were to preview this you can see we have a fully functional landing page that we just built in a few minutes now obviously you have to go down through here and edit the colors and things like that but you can use what you already learned in the first part of this video to kind of come down here and customize um, these layouts okay so hopefully now you have a solid understanding of the basics of webflow and how to use it a little bit more effectively if you have any questions feel free to drop your comments down below and we'll try our best to get back with you also be sure to check out webflow mistakes 101 so that you can avoid the common mistakes that plague new webflow users there'll be a link to that in the description below